Welcome back to the channel. So it's been a couple of weeks since my last upload, but that's not because I haven't been working. I've actually had a bunch of gigs, but they've all been nda to some extent. So can't show them or talk about them in specifics, but I do want to talk about them in general uh, here in a little bit. But this week we are in Atlanta, uh, shooting a documentary for about a week. Most of my work is in the Louisville Midwest area, just from word of mouth, but I do market in Atlanta. It's not something I do that often just because word of mouth, but this gig was something I found through Production Hub, was able to reach out and get in contact with them. Seems like a pretty easy shoot for a week. It's all very light. So I'm just running a camera and a tripod and audio pack. There's no lighting. Their style is all very natural light. Right now I'm just waiting on the producer for the project to show up and then we'll be getting into interviews. The heat index for today is like 105, but luckily we will be inside in one of these places doing interviews and I won't have to sweat through my shirt. Nice car. And then school has its own challenges, being 34 and going back to school after. All right, so the first interviews are wrap. Went great. Just walking to my car real fast for a protein bar. Well, we've got a quick downtime. Like I said, their style is very natural light, but luckily because we are in one of these units, they have these giant windows. And I don't even know if I would have brought in a light if I had them. For the shoot, I did swap my 24 to 105 for the new Sigma 24 to 70 uh, Mark II. I've been thinking about doing it for a while. The 24 to 15 is great for general coverage, but I don't find it to be a very exciting lens. It's not bad looking. I don't know how to describe it. It just doesn't really spark joy when I use it. It's more just for quick coverage and stuff. So I had been thinking about picking up the 24 to 70 for a little more light and hopefully for a little more sharpness and character. And I do think that lens does bring it. Got about two more interviews for today, and then the rest of the week is B-roll and maybe like one other interview, mostly just following around the people that we're getting the main story from today. I always keep a box of these protein bars in my car for long shoots. Never know when your lunch times are gonna be with interviews and everything, so it's good just to be able to walk out and grab one. That's what I've been doing for work. I just started working at this restaurant. It's like a really cool spot. Well, so our last interview flaked out on us. So we only shot two today. Both went really well. Each of them were very well-spoken, knew exactly what they wanted to talk about and how they wanted to communicate. And I do find that creative people have normally figured out how to verbalize or put into at least feeling, you know, their thoughts and feelings. Um, where if, you know someone else might not be able to, they might stumble around. So we got some really good sound bites. And for them being naturally lit, they both looked really good, mostly thanks to this giant window right here. But now we're just doing a quick pack up. I'm going to go spend some time in the city. All right, so it's day two here for the documentary shoot and we are at a skating rink. And that's because one of the people that we interviewed yesterday, uh, skating to them is very important. And so we're going to get some B-roll of them in action. Should be a lot of fun to get some action shots of that. So I'll quickly run through our kit for this week. Everything is on the FX6, and that FX6 has the full tilted cage. That tilted cage has rosettes on it, so I've got one on this side. Actually, that rosette is on the 15 millimeter rod, but I could put it back here. And then the other one is actually on the cage. It's an extension arm with a little wooden handle out there. And I have that position so that I can do a push-pull with my hands, which allows me to keep it a little more stable, especially when it's on the saddle. I can kind of pop this back end under my armpit, and I've got three points of contact. And even with a non-stabilized lens, it's nice and stable. Got the small HT Cine 7 that I've been running for about two months. Absolutely love it. It's a great monitor. It's better than my OC, but it's also like three or four times as much. So I wouldn't put those in the same ballpark. That OCG7 is an amazing monitor and I have nothing bad to say about it. Got the Audio-Technica uh, AT785R, I think is what it is, as a scratch mic. Uh, nothing really fancy there. Stock monitor is just tucked over here on the side, just in case I need to do some autofocus stuff. And then we've got the small rig batteries and the time code box. Time code box is because, especially for this shoot, I'm going to be just popping a mic on her and letting it do the self-record option on those DD packs. And then that way they can line it up in post later on. And then I upgraded my lens to the Sigma 24 to 70 Mark II. Loved the image that came out of it yesterday. It was nice and sharp, contrasty, had a nice pop to it. Pretty much everything that I didn't find in the 24 to 105, even though that's just a great like run around lens, I do find this one to just have a little more of a look to it. 
All right, so while we wait on our talent to show up, I do want to talk through two of the gigs that we've had over the past couple of weeks that I can't actually show any footage from and I have to kind of talk generally about. But the first one was for a nonprofit that does work in the foster care system, trying to find kids that are about to age out of the foster care system uh, forever home. And honestly, it's one of my favorite gigs to do. We do it about twice, three times a year. And the impact that we have on those kids' lives, even for that day, even if you know they don't find a, a forever home moving forward, that that day makes them feel so special. They get to have like a makeover and an interview and all this stuff. Uh, just the the light up on their face when they got to clap the slate, like even just that, like made my day. And if you know me, my background started in the nonprofit world. That's how I got hooked into video production. And so I always kind of have a heart for it. But I will always recommend anybody in video production, you know, try to find a nonprofit that you can partner with. You know, if you got a day off or whatever, go shoot something for them. Your work for them will go so much farther than they can do on their own. The other one was a bigger one was when I got to bring on Austin for and will actually lead to a lot more products in the future. But I can't talk in specifics because there's some political issues. Um, but there's an important lesson that I want to talk about. So it was a gig from somebody that I used to have a professional relationship with in the past and they needed some work done. And that professional relationship in the past, uh, it ended. And there's a lot to say there, but I didn't burn any bridges. And that's the lesson I wanna teach. If you're in a situation where things aren't working out and it's time to move on, don't burn bridges. You never know who you're making an impact on in the situation you are in right now that might lead to something in the future. And now because of that, we've got a bunch of gigs lined up for the immediate future that's gonna lead to a bunch of travel and money and stuff like that. So if you're like one of the three people that can connect all the dots from that story, uh, be cool. We can talk about it offline, but you know, the moral of the story, don't burn bridges.